Spirit of God. And yet he continued to reject God, and therefore God sent that evil spirit into his life. It was his choices that caused that evil spirit. But still, they, re they say that God is in charge. But they also want to tell us that we have responsibility for the things that happen to us. Saul had ultimate responsibility for the fact that his, that spirit was working in his life. He was crazy because he'd made himself crazy. The text points out that Saul's illness is linked to his own rebellion. And we need to understand that too. We need to realize that God is in charge, but that our sin causes the problems that we face in this world. We always have to deal with the idea that God is in charge and that we are free. And Saul points this out very clearly to us. David points this out very clearly to us. Yes, the evil spirit was from God, but it was because of Saul's actions. Yes, David was blessed by God, but it was because he chose to follow after the Lord. Because when he, and when he sinned, he repented of those sins. We need to understand that, yes, God is in charge, and yes, we are responsible. And both of those things are in balance in the Bible. God's Spirit is at work in blessing David. But David also has a responsibility. He has to respond to what God is doing in his life. He has to be obedient, even though he doesn't know all the things that God has got planned for him. He still has to be obedient. He still has to choose to follow after the Lord. This paragraph links those theological explanations of God either blessing or God re removing his blessings with the everyday things that happen in our lives. With all of those little things that come about in David's life. It was because Saul had this evil spirit in his life that he kept throwing spears at David. And they hated David on moments and, and loved him at other moments. We can see that God is at work, but it was because of their choices. God is positioning David in the royal court, court as a means of fulfilling his promise. He has got his master plan. He has got his great design and he's moving the pieces that he wants to have in place. And David needs to be obedient in that move. Saul needs help. Saul's aide knows the guy. Saul brings in his own replacement. How ironic is that? God is moving all of these pieces together. But David doesn't know that God is doing all of this. And neither do we. We can see it because we've read the book. But we don't know what God is doing in our life. We know what God wants us to do. He wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. But we don't know how that works out on a daily basis. We know that God wants us to love each other as he has loved us. But we don't know how that works on a daily basis. We see the great plan, but we don't know what God does in our daily lives. How is David supposed to respond to these events? He responds the way we respond to everyday things that are happening in our life, with obedience, with trust that God is moving, and that God knows what he's doing. We're committed to the idea that God is at work in our lives. That is just something that Christians just believe. God is working, he's, he's in charge, he's moving us around, he's moving people around, he's got control of nations, he is in control of our lives. We're committed to that idea. But... Most of the time, we're not consciously aware of what he's doing. Were you consciously aware that God brought you to this place this morning? Probably not. We just thought, okay, it's time for church. Let's get going. We want to be with Christ's people. We want to be with, with Christ. We want to praise the Lord. We want to hear the word. We want to pray. We want to, we, but we aren't consciously aware of what God is doing in, in the grand scheme of things. We just know that he is. And we're willing to work out the idea. This is a picture of Avatar, which I haven't seen, so I, maybe I shouldn't show this move, picture. It shows what goes on behind the scenes. On the left, you see the picture of the final product. On the right, you see what goes on before that. You can see that her mouth shape is the same. You can see that her eyebrows are the same. You can see that her hand gesture is the same. We don't see what goes on behind the scenes, but we see the finished product. We don't see what God is doing in our lives, but we know that we have to obedient, be obedient and we know that God is working. God is in our lives. 
and we need to trust him for that. And we're often confused about how it all fits together. You know, what is going on? Why is God allowing this? What is God doing in our lives? It's just chaotic. And we just don't know how it all fits together. How can God's call and purpose for my life possibly be related to the mess that I find myself in? You know, God has called you into a a tremendous purpose in this world to go out and evangelize the world. So how does it relate to this little kid? You know, that's involved in your life. There's a mess, there's a messy diapers, there's, you know, how in the world can God be working in that mess? But it happens to all of us. And it happens everywhere. What must this have been like for David, this poor shepherd kid? If we can figure out how it worked out for him, maybe we can understand how it's working out for us. So let's look at David's life. Here he was, out in the, sh- out in the field, and all of a sudden, Samuel, whoa, the biggest prophet, preacher, important person in the history of Israel for the last 400 years, shows up at your house. And all of his brothers rush into town to be part of this event. And they say, you stay here. He's going, okay. You know, all right, this is my part in life. I'm the youngest. I got to do what they say. They're bigger than I am. They're meaner than I am. I just better do it. How is God working in that? And then, you know, he's sitting out there in the field going, Ah, you know, this is my lot. I'll just be a shepherd all my life. No big problem. Samuel's there. Brothers are there. I'll be here. And then Samuel says, you come. I'm anointing you. Well, what does that mean? You're anointing me. He anointed Saul, but that can't be right because he's already anointed Saul. What does this all mean? There was already a king. In fact, there was already a prince. He can't mean me. He wants me to be king. Well, maybe he wants me to be a priest. No, that can't be right either because, you know, kings are anointed, priests are anointed, but I'm from the tribe of Judah. You know, that can't be me. How's he thinking about this? What does God want him to do? Now, David is certainly willing to obey God, but he really has no clue what that means. Just like us, we know that we're going to obey God, but where is God leading us? David just went back to sheep herding, you know? He gets anointed by Samuel, this amazing prophet, and then he goes back to herding sheep because God hadn't said, what are you supposed to do in, in the grand scheme of things? And so he was obedient to his parents, went back to herding sheep. Well, he probably said out there in the field, this is what God wants, this is what God gets. I'll be a sheep herder for him.